Hey, y'all. Did you know that one plus one may not equal two? Find out. Hey, y'all. It's your cousin Keith. You are not going to believe the conversation that I just had. I was with the professor, the mathematician, who taught me some things that one plus one may not always equal two. Hold on. Find out for yourself what he had to say. Well, we're back after a little time off. I uh, took a little little break, a little sabbatical. I wanted to get the roster together. So back to Profiles in Excellence. I'm your host, Keith Woolrich here. And today I got the mathematician. I got the professor. I got the man with me right here, uh, Dr. B, Mr. Christopher Anderson. What's up, man? Another day. Another day, huh? Absolutely. Another day, the man. The Lord has made. The Lord has made. I know that's why right. we're right before uh, Thanksgiving, and we're at church right now. Well, church is over, but uh, we just had our fellowship time, and Chris and I uh, also brothers in Christ, and we've getting to, got to know each other over the years with lunches and things of that nature. So, as you know, this format is just about highlighting cats that are doing something well in the community doing something well in the world that are assets to all of us. So I've, I've chosen this brother today. So tell the people a little bit about yourself, man. Well, um, I, my journey in mathematics, I've always loved math. Um, I started out, I was the kid in class who would, instead of people doing coloring books, I was doing math. Wow. wow. <laughs> you were that kid. So you were the kid that messed up the curve. <laughs> you were that kid. All right. But I've, I've always loved math. And um, when I first went to college, I actually was going to be an engineer. Um, and then um, when I was at UC Merced, and uh -oh. um, come, I ended up having to come back to Bakersfield. And at CCUB, they didn't have engineering. We didn't have the engineering program yet, and so I got my degree in mathematics. Okay. Um, from there, I um, I started working at uh, BC um, part time and then full time, uh, tutoring everything from you know pre algebra all the way up to calculus three and everything else. Wow! So you are a mathematician. Yes. My yeah. good. See, that's what, that's what's cool. <laughs> you know, when I do these these interviews with people, Chris, I enjoy it because. We are all over the place, right? And, and I love it when I see another brother like yourself, uh, family man, raising his child, taking care of his business. And not all of us are athletes, right? Sure. Some of us are scholars. <laughs> right. You are a scholar, <laughs> and it's a good thing, right? So tell, again, tell us more about that journey and your scholarship and, and what, what, what moved you that way. Uh, so so after, after that, so I, I got into teaching. Um, for a year and a half, I was at a wonderful college prep in Delano. I taught uh, algebra, um, geometry, pre-calculus and calculus. Um, and then from there, um, my journey took, I, I wanted, it, because it was in Delano and I didn't, having a newborn, I didn't want to have to drive to Delano. I came back to Bakersfield and now I'm at Walter Stern Middle School uh, teaching eighth grade uh, algebra. Wonderful, man. And again, the... I think it was Emmanuel Kant that said, uh, examples are the go-karts of judgment, right? So these young people get to see you teaching high-level math, man. That's a beautiful thing, brother. I want to congratulate you. That's a beautiful thing. And, you know, we all have a journey. We all have a space. And you felt you, you feel this niche, man, of, of, of being a, a young man who's taking care of his business, man of color. Uh, I think it's a beautiful thing. That you are you're doing the right thing, and I want to congratulate you. I appreciate that. And is is there are very few people of color in mathematics, um, in all of my college classes, and I I've never I wouldn't say I've never, but it's been rare to see anyone else in in the field of mathematics at the high school level, middle school level. We're just not there. Just not there. Chris, let me ask you this question. For the young people that may be watching this, what has been your formula for success? What have you done? What, what, if you, tell the people, tell the young, the young man who may want to be in math, but he's worried about what his friends, what his boys going to say, right? 
What would you tell this young cat right now that may be listening to this? What, one thing that I would say to anyone who would want to pursue math is persistence. Um, you're not going to get it on the first try. And if you, and, and that's, that's what, what, what gets a lot of people is they're like, you know, I tried the problem, it didn't work out. Um, I guess I'm not good at it, I'm going to move on to something else. Okay. It's, it's the persistence, it's not giving up on, on anything. And, and, but you, that doesn't just apply to math. If, if you want to play an instrument, and you know, you don't just pick up one. That's right, day. you play the keys, baby, that's right. You pick up the keys, that's right. <laughs> and, and yeah, I've, I've played the piano for about 20 years, and it, it doesn't, it's not, like the first day I wasn't able to play, you know, great pieces of classical or jazz or gospel. It took years, it took years. And if you, you got to stick with it, though. And that's with anything in life, not just mathematics. And, um, but if, if you want to get good at it, just be persistent. Ask the questions. Not just like, does it work? Like, how does it work? Why does it work? Be curious. Continue be to be curious. curious. That's a life lesson right there in anything that we do. It's to stay curious, right? Stay thinking. Stay asking questions. There's, not, there's absolutely nothing wrong if I heard you correctly in asking questions. And, and that's one of your formulas, what you say that's made you as successful? Today. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Talk In to fact, us about ask, that. ask lots of questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. The, every, and when I'm in the classroom teaching, I'll, I'll, I'll ask, you know, everyone, did everybody understand this? Silence. Or like, yeah, they'll nod their heads. Yeah, we got it. We got it. Half the class asks questions. They'll right. come after me. They're like, you know, I actually didn't get this. Like, well, you know what? If you had asked that, you could have been in fit the entire classroom. But a lot of times they feel like, you know, I'm going to look dumb asking a question. And I'm like, no. I, lo I love it when I get questions from my students because that means that someone's like, you know what? I want to figure this out. I'm going to take the uh, initiative to, to try to figure this out. I'm going to ask that question. So ask questions. So asking questions is a good thing. Absolutely. And unfortunately, a lot of times in the, in, in the classroom, asking questions at time is almost frowned upon. Not so much by the teacher, but by right. the other student. Right. right? So if you want to ascribe and go higher, ask more questions. Did I hear you correctly? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, there's, and, the, and there's always that, you know, a quote unquote annoying kid who asks all the questions. Be that annoying kid. He said, be that annoying <laughs> kid, okay. <laughs> be that annoying be kid. Be that annoying kid. Now, they say that there's no such thing as, as a dumb question. I mean, there are bad questions, but there is no such thing as a dumb question. Okay. I, I would have to say. Um, All right, let me ask this question yes. as, we get, as we wrap up. For the parent yeah. that may be watching this, mm -hmm. what advice would you give them? I would say... Be involved, no matter what, like, I know, I know a lot of, and if you don't know, don't be afraid to ask. Like, I've, I've been tutoring for about 15 years, and one thing that's common with all of my students is that they weren't afraid to ask for help. Okay. And the, the parents weren't afraid to reach out and say, you know what, I don't know this, I need to hire someone who does know this. Okay. And as a parent... It's so, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. It's just, it, mathematics is just a language. It's like Spanish, French, anything else. Okay. If you, if you don't use it, you lose it. And you shouldn't be ashamed that you don't go back and know how to convert fractions to decimals because you don't do that every day. Right, right. And um, there's no problem as, a, as an example for your kid to say, um, I need help. Like, let me reach out to someone else for help. Okay, all right. So you're also t asking or telling or... Or inferring that parents as well ask questions. So isn't that what life is, is kind of coming down to today in this conversation? Don't be afraid to ask. Is that absolutely? That sounds like that's the theme today. Absolutely. You know, let's just ask the question. If we don't know something, reach out to somebody who does, because somebody does have the answer. Absolutely. You know, I, I I sit on the school board as you know, and there's some situations we haven't figured out yet, and I just tell staff go find it. Somebody has crossed this bridge that we are attempting to. Why rebuild the bridge, right? When somebody can pull us over based on the answers that they have. So, man, I love that. And, that, and that's going to help me as I continue to grow and develop as a professional. Because even as a teacher myself, I need to ask more questions of my students, 
of my peers, of life, just to continue to ask questions. So, man, that's good. That's good stuff right there, brother. What would you leave, what would you leave us with as you are continuing to be a profile in excellence? What parting words of wisdom do you have for us? I would say that as a teacher, you're never, you're never the best. You're always learning. There is, you're never your best self. Every day you want to build on what you know. Every day Every you day. want to build on what, I like that. Every day. Every, so work on our crafts. Absolutely. Every day. Every day. All right. I got to ask the follow-up question. What does yes. that look like? What does that look like? For me, as a musician, that means that I'm playing something every day. As a mathematician, I'm writing, I'm going to try to solve a problem that I haven't solved before. Or even going back and doing a problem that I've already done. If it's, no matter what, what you do, that you're doing something to make you better than you were yesterday. You're saying, even, or, and if I'm in the classroom, it's like, ah, I, my I can improve my classroom management if I do this differently. If I put this structure in place. It's whatever you're doing, making it better than it was yesterday. Okay. All right. That's just in life then. Every day, work on our craft to be better than we were yesterday. Absolutely. All right, Professor. We got it. Thank you so much for your time. Not a problem. Again, this is another profile in, ex in, in excellence, and this is what these videos are about. Just uh, introducing to some and reinforming to others of cats that's doing the right thing in our community. So until our next chat, thanks so much, and bye for now. Peace. Didn't I tell you that was going to be an amazing conversation with the professor? One plus one don't always equal two. But what did we learn? To always ask questions. There was nothing wrong with not knowing we don't know when we don't ask. Here's something, ladies and gentlemen. If you like this type of content, you want to hear more, please let me know. If there's anybody in the area that is a profile in excellence, please let me know. Because we can sit down, ask questions, and learn from everybody. If you like this, subscribe, share, tell your friends. And we'll be back for more with Conversations with Yoka.